On October 19, 2017, the Pan-STARRS telescope at Haleakala Observatory in Hawaii made an astonishing discovery. A discovery that would change the future of astronomy. The first ever confirmed interstellar object passing through our solar system. At first, astronomers called the object Rama, after an alien spacecraft in an Arthur C. Clarke novel. However, after that, it was determined that perhaps that wasn't the best name for this object, as strange as it was, and instead it was named Amuamua, a Hawaiian name for Scout. And perhaps this was a far more appropriate name, although at the time, astronomers didn't realize that. But the more that we studied this object, the more that astronomers analyzed the data, the more it became clear that this object was fundamentally different than any we had detected before. Now, since 2017, team after team of astronomers have done their level best to convince themselves and the scientific community that Oumuamua was in some way a natural object from another solar system, just different than anything we had seen before. However, none of the explanations put forward by these astronomers has held water, and the only logical explanation that remains is an artificial one. How do we know this? Well, first of all, we need to look at some of the basic fundamentals of what Oumuamua was and where it came from. Now, one of the strangest things about Oumuamua was the fact that we saw it at all. For interstellar objects to randomly encounter our solar system with any kind of regular occurrence, especially a rocky asteroid-like object as Oumuamua appeared to be, this would require that every solar system in the galaxy eject at least 1,000 trillion such objects during the course of its lifetime. This seems highly unlikely. The only thing that makes interstellar objects a little bit more likely to encounter and a little bit more plausible is if solar systems eject large numbers of objects from their Oort cloud. In other words, comets. This is a much, much larger number simply because most solar systems have enormous populations of comets. Therefore, we should encounter objects like 2I Borisov, the second interstellar object to be detected passing through our solar system, to be far more frequent. In other words, comets that are obviously comets, whereas Oumuamua had no cometary tail, even when it made a very close pass by our sun because we had astronomical instruments at the time observing the sun and any cometary objects that might have passed it in 2017, Oumuamua didn't give off so much as a whiff of a tail, let alone anything as obvious as 2i Borisov. So the odds of us actually encountering something like Oumuamua were immensely unlikely to begin with. And then there's Oumuamua's trajectory and point of origin. First of all, Oumuamua originated from a point that corresponds with the LSR, or Local Standard of Rest for the Galaxy. That means that it remains relatively stationary compared to the stars in motion around it. This would make it an extremely useful navigational instrument, as well as something that could happen across just about every star in its region just by the force of gravity. It would be perfectly positioned both as a navigational aid and as a scout to explore star systems in the galaxy over a long period of time. And then there was the course that Oumuamua took through the solar system. 
It passed not only through the Goldilocks zone of our star, but also it passed within 0.16 astronomical units of the Earth. Now granted, that is a fairly substantial distance, approximately 24 million kilometers, but keep in mind, for an asteroid to qualify as a near-Earth object, it only needs to pass within 45 million kilometers of our planet. So purely by chance, Chance. This object happened to pass much closer to Earth than most of the near-Earth object asteroids in the vicinity of the solar system. And also keep in mind that the solar system, um, that is if I can have your attention for a moment, I'll explain what these are a little bit later, the solar system is approximately 60 astronomical units in diameter based on the orbit of Neptune. So we're talking something that could have passed anywhere through our solar system on its path through the galaxy, and instead it chose to pass that close to our planet, certainly close enough to get a very good look. In fact, as you just saw, perhaps close enough to drop something off which would later intercept our planet. But as I say, we'll get to that in just a moment. But what is even more significant about Oumuamua was what it did on its way out of the solar system. And although I'm sure quite a number of you are familiar with what Oumuamua did on its way out of the solar system, it is important to remember just how bizarre and unusual this object was to begin with, because we are already talking about an object that statistically should have been a comet, and yet it wasn't. An object that should not have passed so close to our planet, and yet it did an object that should not have originated from such an incredibly useful point in the galaxy, and yet it did. And also, it was such a strange object. Now, admittedly, it may not have looked like this. Some of the data indicates that it may have been more like a disc than a stick, but it was long and strangely thin and also extremely reflective. And it also tumbled. Again, not as fast as this. We do this just for illustrative purposes here. It actually rotated about three times a day, but it maintained this tumbling rate constantly and steadily during its entire course through the solar system. And this is what makes its last and most mysterious bit of behavior so impossible. Because as it left the solar system, it accelerated. Or to be more precise, the sun's gravity and the gravity of the solar system itself did not slow it down as much as it should. It deviated from its course by approximately 100,000 kilometers while it was being observed. Now granted, this is a very small deviation as far as solar system distances are concerned, but it simply shouldn't have happened. There's only one type of object in the universe that we have observed that does this, at least natural objects that do this, and that's comets. But in order to have adjusted its trajectory by this degree, if it were a natural object, approximately 20% of the object's mass would have had to have been vented into space very violently in order to achieve this type of acceleration in an object this big and heavy. This kind of venting would have definitely created a cometary coma, or if for some reason it was an invisible gas that our instruments were not designed to detect, like hydrogen, it definitely would have created a substantial debris trail as the solid pieces of the object were blasted out by this violent venting. And yet, even though the best instruments available to us were trained on this object on its course out of the solar system, there was no evidence whatsoever of any venting at all, meaning that we have to look for other explanations for this acceleration. And even if there was some kind of invisible venting or invisible acceleration that changed Muamua's trajectory in a way that we just don't understand, and we're beginning to stretch the limits of what's reasonably possible here, it would also have to be an acceleration that didn't impact Muamua's tumbling. 
because its rate of rotation didn't change during this observed acceleration, whereas any sort of natural venting would have definitely caused some sort of shuddering. Some observable change in Oumuamua's rate of rotation, and yet none were observed, meaning that we would have to be dealing with multiple forces acting on the object, all of which would cancel one another out while accelerating the object at the same time. And the odds of all of these things happening purely by chance are now in excess of a trillion to one, according to Dr. Avi Loeb. And if you're interested in his calculations, well, you just have to read his book, Extraterrestrial, which covers all of Oumuamua's mysterious characteristics in great detail. And finally, there's one other strange phenomena that transpired during Oumuamua's journey through our solar system, something that absolutely should not have happened, and yet it did. In 2017, a small interstellar meteor, a meteor traveling at a sufficient velocity and unusual trajectory to categorize it as a meteor from outside our solar system, struck our atmosphere and impacted off the coast of Portugal. It was roughly a meter in size and traveled at a speed of 40 kilometers per second. And in addition to that, it survived to such a low altitude, suggesting that it had a material strength greater than 99% of the meteors recorded in NASA's catalog of Earth impacts. This suggested that at least 40% of the object was comprised of metal, and only two other meteors in NASA's catalog of nearly 300 meteors had a stronger tensile strength. And one of those, by the way, was the other known interstellar meteor that impacted off the coast of New Guinea in 2014. Another highly unlikely event that we would just happen to have an interstellar meteor so strong and resilient impacting our planet in the same year that Oumuamua passed through our solar system. And this led not only Avi Loeb, but also former Aero Chief Sean Kirkpatrick to co-author a paper theorizing that the orb-like objects that had been observed in our atmosphere over the last several years could in fact be probes dispatched by a mothership like Oumuamua. Sean Kirkpatrick, of course, changed his public opinion quite radically over the next several months until eventually he left his post, but Avi Loeb has never deviated from this position. And I can already hear some of you asking, well, if we're talking about such an advanced civilization with technology capable of traveling between the stars, then why would the probe crash? Well, my answer to that is perhaps it was one of a collection of probes, only one of which actually crashed, and the remainder were able to enter our atmosphere under far more controlled circumstances and are amongst us right now, perhaps being spotted in the skies of New Jersey or in the skies of Iraq. But unfortunately, as we all know, the vast majority of the scientific community scoffs at such notions. They continue to cling to the increasingly unlikely scenario that a natural object capable of things that no natural object we have ever observed has been able to do pass through our solar system in 2017. And while remarkable, and while an amazing object was definitely not evidence of an extraterrestrial civilization. And that, in my opinion, is a very sad thing, because assuming our civilization actually survives this long, we may discover that the true definition of a sophisticated and intelligent species is a species capable of thinking outside its own limited range of thought and scholarly opinion and instead to imagine that they are not quite so unique in the universe and that intelligent life may indeed be far more common than we ever supposed. <laughs>